scooters, 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 we decided to visit a scrapyard just to kind of see what we could see and maybe get some inspiration for a chassis. How much metal? Tons. <laughs> this is my pal Sean. He's a pretty neat dude and we'll be working on this scooter together. What do we need first? Uh, you know, I'd like a chassis. Some sort of scooter chassis. You think anybody like came over here with a scooter chassis? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, there's a bike right there. Oh, there's a scooter right here. Ah, but that's puny, dude. Oh, I mean, we could... Have something. <laughs> there was lots of stuff to look at, but nothing of immediate use to us. Bunch of bullet shells. All these spools. So many spools. Got this entire crane right here. Yeah, it's got a fan in there. Although we left empty-handed, we now had a good idea of how we should build the scooter. We got to planning and decided that welding a kid's bike to a metal chassis would be a safe, easy bet. That way, we didn't have to worry about steering and drive shafts since all those parts would come from the bike. And all the batteries, motor, and electronics would be housed in the chassis. Costing us $15 from Craigslist, we got two bikes to work with. We began disassembling the bikes and quickly realized our mistake after mangling the back wheel bearings. Uh, this meant that we couldn't actually use the back sprocket to drive the wheel any longer as we had planned. And we just kind of decided to worry about it later. To begin work on the chassis, we marked out and cut metal angle. But hang on, I'm just going to put this out there now. For the first few days, we used a grinding wheel to cut steel. And if you didn't know, that's pretty bad. That's not the last naive misuse of a tool you'll be seeing in this video. But now that all the metal angle had been cut to size or, or close enough, it was time to tack weld the frame together. None of us have welded before, and the welder we used had just come in the mail, so it came as no surprise that the chassis parts didn't actually fit together the first time. In our designs, the top of the chassis bolts to the bottom for easy access to the electronics, but our metal pieces ended up varying in size due to the grinding reasons. This caused the entire top and bottom halves to be misaligned, which required a couple hours worth of fabrication. Let's see the fit. Ooh. Good. Hang on, hang on. Oh, Brad. What's wrong? It's like not fitting on this side. But after that was sorted out, it was just about drilling bolt holes to hold the two halves together, which also proved to be quite troublesome. I placed orders for the drivetrain once we found compatible parts at a good price point. The entire drivetrain came out to be $170, including the $80 worth of batteries, which is actually a pretty good deal for a 1 kilowatt setup. For the battery pack, we went with Samsung 18650 cells. Soldering them in a 14S 2P configuration would give us the 48 volts required for the motor and 30 amps of continuous current. We would have preferred using a spot welder to nickel up the battery, which would have been easier, quicker, better looking, provided a better connection, and conducting less heat to the batteries, like heat but the, battery the eBay up. soldering iron was way more budget friendly. Is super glue? Could that help? This is already uh, plastic, so it's got to super glue together. The battery ended up looking pretty ugly, flimsy, misaligned, and we accidentally blew a couple cells in the process, but the voltage did end up where we wanted it. I'll definitely be looking into a spot welder for future projects. And the next step was to solder all the connections for the battery management system, which was a walk in the park compared to soldering the battery together. Because the battery was so flimsy, I decided to turn to hot glue, which made it much more stable. But the nickel was all still exposed, so we used three coats of liquid electrical tape on either side to insulate those connections. We soldered and heat shrunk the battery connections directly, which we later made pairs of disconnects for. Hooking up the motor controller was pretty confusing since there were no diagrams to go off of. All we had was a gut feeling and an eBay listing. The throttle connections fit nicely when wedged into the controller's disconnects, and the motor just so happened to have the same disconnects as the controller. Alright, I'm going to Okay. And it lights up. Let's 
BR. Haha. <laughs> nice. Send it. Whoa! Oh, <laughs> <not called>, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, me down. Yeah, right now, motor doesn't spin. Okay. Key goes in, turn, battery indicator on, slowly throttle it, and it's just spinning. And that's all we got to do for part one. Sean is actually going on a five week vacation, so it'll be up to me to complete the scooter. There's still quite a lot to do. I've got to heavily modify the chassis to accommodate the motor, not to mention the drive shaft and mounting the front wheel. I'd love y'all's feedback, and I will see you guys in part two.